Hey everyone, it's Bill here with the Vinylverse. Um, today's video is all about Genesis. Um, I've mentioned it before, uh, but if you're not aware, Genesis are my favorite band. Um, I've been a fan of Genesis for a long time, uh, probably since around 1980 um, or so is when I became aware of them. Um, and pretty much from the moment I saw them, uh, something clicked with me and this band and you know I've been uh, they've been my favorite uh, pretty much since then um, before I get to those uh, records though before I show you them I wanted to do a couple things first of all a big thank you to the Omaha introvert Hannah if you uh, if I'm sure you're all subscribed to her channel but uh, she did something that was pretty um, pretty special to me and I'm sure to a lot of other people, but she gave a bunch of us uh, shout outs. Um, must have been 15 to 20 or so channels. Um, so Hannah, that means a lot. I appreciate you doing that uh, uh, for me and for all those other channels that you, that you uh, mentioned. Uh, subscribe to the Omaha Introvert if you're not. She's uh, she's got a great channel. Um, she's always showing uh, her latest pickups. Um, a lot of great stuff. Um, now also, there's a couple channels um, that are right almost at the hundred uh, subscriber mark, and it would it would be great if you could check these channels out and. Uh, if you're not subscribed, give them the sub and push them over to 100. The first is Luke Siam. Uh, Luke sent me my first VCLT. Uh, he's, uh, he's got a great channel. I've mentioned him before. Um, I think he's at 96 or so subs, so he's just about there. Um, really great channel, one of my favorites. Next is um, DJ High Noon. Um, another great channel. Tim, uh, he's at 98 subs, and so, you know, he's, like, right there. So if you're not familiar with Tim's channel, check him out. It's great. Um, I'll, I'll put these links down below so uh, uh, you can check him out. And last but not least, um, Tommy Burton. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Tommy's um, regular channel. Puts up a lot of great uh, videos of his collection and such. But about a few months ago, he started a second channel called Daily Records. And every single day, he does about four or five minutes on a single record. And I think it's great. I really enjoy it. Um, yeah, it's just a really great channel. Uh, he does a very good job. Um, given some history on the album uh it's yeah just go check it out do yourself a favor i don't think you'll be disappointed um so yeah that's it now that i got that out of the way um to genesis um i'm kind of riding on the coattails of robert z over at my music collection he uh just did this same type of video a few days ago uh this is something that i've wanted to do for a while i just haven't gotten to it yet and this will be the first Genesis related video that I'm sure I'll do in a, you know, in a handful of, with, along with a handful of other videos. So, like I said, this video is going to be, I'm going to show the Genesis catalog of what I have on vinyl. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into detail for the actual albums. Um, I think down the road I'll probably talk about the albums uh, more specifically specifically and give a lot more detail on them. Uh, what I plan to do in this video is just show, show the records, um, maybe mention a song or two, the ones that I like or uh, whatnot. So uh, let's get started. So in 1969, Genesis released their first record called From Genesis to Revelation. Now the original record looked very close to this, but there was, this Genesis was not here. It was just all black with the title up here. Um, 
This pressing is from 1974. It's a U.S. pressing on London Records. I'll pull it out here. So the lineup included uh, Peter Gabriel, Tony Banks, uh, Mike Rutherford, Anthony Phillips, and Jonathan Silver, um, John Silver. So Peter Gabriel on vocals, he's also credited with uh, flute, accordion, and tambourine. Anthony Phillips on acoustic, 12-string guitar, lead electric guitar, and dulcimer and vocals. Tony Banks on organ, piano, mellotron, guitar, and voices. Mike Rutherford on bass, 12-string, uh, 12 string, I'm sorry, 12 string bass, cello, and vocals, and then John Silver on drums and percussion. Um, here's the uh, inner. It's, it's got the lyrics. Um, label, London. So, not too much to say about this album. Um, Genesis themselves aren't, uh, have, you know, they, they don't talk about this album too highly. Um, but you know what, for, for, uh, first record, it's not bad. It's, uh, it had some or orchestral stuff put over top of it, which I'm sure they weren't too crazy about. Um, but my, a couple of my favorite songs on it are In Limbo, Am I Very Wrong, and The Conqueror. Now also, this uh, record here, Rock Roots Genesis, is the same from Genesis to Revelation record, just uh, put out by Decca, different cover. This came out in 1976. Um, not much to say about it other than uh, it's a variation of from genera, gen, from Genesis to Revelation. Okay. Next. Nineteen seventy, Genesis put out their second record called Trespass. Um, now they, the lineup changed somewhat slightly. Uh, John Silver was out of the band, and a new drummer came in named John Mayhew. Um, this is my original copy that I bought back sometime in the 1980s. Um, this pressing is from 1981 on MCA Records. Okay. At some point, I bought another copy, and this is a gatefold, which I believe the original was. Um, this is a Japanese pressing from 1978. Um, you can see the Japanese there, but it's got the original liner, um, and it's on the Charisma label with the Mad Hatter there. Um, so yeah, this is a much better copy than the original one that I bought back in the 80s. Um, so favorite song from this album is Stagnation. All right, 1971, Genesis released their third record called Nursery Crime. Um, so this had another lineup change. Um, Anthony Phillips had left the band uh, and they also fired the drummer John Mayhew and in comes Steve Hackett and Phil Collins. Um, and this was 
this became the classic five-man lineup of Genesis. Uh, Peter Gabriel, Tony Banks, Mike Rutherford, Steve Hackett, and Phil Collins. Now this uh, copy is the copy that I bought back sometime back in the 1980s. Uh, it's from 1982, pressed in 1982 on Atlantic Records. That's the label. At some point, I bought uh, another copy. This is a UK uh, repressing from 1972. Here's the gatefold. So I love the uh, artwork on this. The previous album and this one and the following one were all done by an artist named Paul Whitehead. Um, really cool artwork. And like I said, this is from 1972 UK pressing. Um, album came out in 1971. Favorite songs on this album uh, uh, is Musical Box, Fountain of Solmasses. They're probably my two favorites. And just so happens that they open and close the record. Uh, okay, next. In 1972... Genesis, Genesis release Foxtrot. Um, this is my original copy that I bought at some point in the 1980s. We're probably talking around, you know, 84, 85. Don't recall when I purchased it. Um, here's another cool cover uh, from Paul Whitehead. He also designed this version of the logo. Inside the gatefold. This is on Charisma. Uh, this was pressed in 1984, if I hadn't said that already. Um, so favorite cuts from this album are, well, their ultimate classic 23-minute minute song, uh, Supper's Ready. Um, awesome epic and watcher of the skies two of my favorite genesis songs up next in 1973 they put out a live album genesis live uh i need to put out and during this era peter gabriel would wear um costumes and face makeup uh to portray some of the lyrics that he was singing about um <clears throat> or create a character around the song. Um, so a very, very cool cover uh, shot here of the band. Um, Genesis Live. This version was pressed in 1986, uh, and it happens to be a Canadian pressing. Again, you can see Peter Gabriel there with bat wings on his head. A um, little bizarre, but uh, very cool nonetheless. And this is on Charisma. Uh, favorite song off of this is probably The Knife. Closes out the album. Okay, also 1973. Great album, Selling, in in Selling England by the Pound. Um, Great cover art by an artist named Betty Swanwick. Um, with the exception of this lawnmower that was added in after the f fact for um, for the song I Know What I Like in Your Wardrobe. Uh, talks about a lawnmower and that got added into this painting. Um, great album. This version is a U.S. pressing from 1980. It's my original copy on Atlantic. Favorite song off of this, uh, and one of my favorite songs by Genesis and Generals, it's called Firth of Fifth. And um, to me, 
the guitar solo is one for the ages and it's nothing flashy it's uh, more atmospheric and the mood it sets uh, and the way it just uh, builds with the band in the background it's just incredible um, now Steve Hackett still tours um, and plays a lot of Genesis music and seeing him do that solo is something very special um, it's it's awesome okay now we're moving to 1974 the lamb lies down on Broadway and this would be Peter Gabriel's last album with the band um, it's a double album this is a US pressing from 1985 Again, this is my original copy from 1985. Sorry, yeah, whenever I picked it up in the 80s at some point. Um, it's a concept album, and here's the story that Peter Gabriel had written. Um, great, great album. Um, here's the original inner sleeve. Um, so yeah, this, the unique thing about this album was, there's the Echo label, the unique thing about this album was, uh, Tony Banks, Mike Rutherford, Phil Collins, and Steve Hackett all recorded the music on their own while Peter Gabriel went into another room and wrote the lyrics and the story and the concept. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's so many great moments on this record. Um, I just love it. So, um, standouts for me are Fly on a Windshield, um, In the Cage, Carpet Crawlers, the Lamia, it, anyway, Lily White Lilith. Oh, so many great songs on this album. Um, so that was The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. Um, like I said, Peter Gabriel leaves after that album. Um, Genesis decides to continue as a four piece, and in 1976, they release A Trick of the Tale. This is a terrific album. Um, I love this cover, it's got great artwork really sets the tone you know the the color um of this album I, I mean this album cover really feels like the music inside it really sets the mood um this is my original copy from 1985 um not sure when I bought it. It's on the Atco label. Um, favorite song off of this is Ripples. Other standouts are Dance on a Volcano, Squonk, Entangled. You know, pretty much all, pretty much all the songs. Um, it's really, really great album. But Ripples is my favorite. Now, when Genesis toured for that album, uh, since Phil Collins is now the lead singer and is going to be out in front of the stage, he needed uh, someone who could play his drum parts. So they hire uh, the great Bill Bruford for this tour. Um, Bill, formerly of Yes and King Crimson up to that point. Um, so that's pretty cool. So uh, moving Later on in 1976, Genesis puts, Genesis puts out this album, Within Mothering. Um, again, this cover really portrays the mood of the album. Uh, yeah. Um, so this album would end up being Steve Hackett's last um, full studio album with uh, the band. 
he leaves after this. Um, this is a wonderful album. Um, this is my original copy from 1978. It's 1978 pressing on the Atco label. Um, I also last was it last year yeah 2016 um, a reissue came out and I ordered it and Steve Hackett signed it for me um, I didn't meet him in person for him to sign this uh, sign this copy although I have met Steve Hackett in person before that's a story for another time um, but I ordered this from his website. It's a remastered version of this album. Um, and it's back. Slightly, the color is slightly different from the other version. It's a little lighter. And this is on the Charisma label, and it's a much uh, heavier vinyl, so I'm not sure if it's 180 gram, but it's, uh, it's definitely heavier. Favorite songs off this album are uh, Blood on the Rooftops, uh, 11th Earl of Mar, and then there's a medley at the end uh, of Side 2 with, um, let's see here, Unquiet Slumbers for the Sleepers, In That Quiet Earth, and Afterglow. Um, the first Unquiet Slumbers for the Sleepers and In That Quiet Earth. Great instrumental track. And then it goes right into a Tony Banks classic, uh, Afterglow. All right, um, moving right along. Genesis puts out their next live album in 1977 called Seconds Out. Um, uh, this is when Steve Hackett truly left the band uh, during the mixing of this album. Um, uh, really great live album, and I mean, this cover is amazing. Um, I just love this cover. Um, this is an original U.S. pressing from 1977. Um, now, on this album, you can see right here, this is Chester Thompson. Um, he took over the touring drummer reigns uh, after Bill Bruford for Genesis. Um, now, he plays on almost all the tracks on here. There's only one that is from, uh, one song from 1970s, the 1976 tour that Bill Bruford played on. That song is The Cinema Show, uh, but the rest of the album is all Chester Thompson on drums. Uh, here's the label. So, favorite songs off of this one is definitely Supper's Ready. Um, Cinema show. They're probably my favorite. Uh, great live album. So, um, then Genesis released this EP called Spot the Pigeon, and it had one carryover song from, with Steve Hackett on here, uh, called Inside and Out, which is a really great song. It's a shame it never made it onto a studio album. It's, it's great. The other two songs are Match of the Day and Pigeons. Um, this is a Canadian pressing from 1977 uh, and it's on blue vinyl. But yeah, Inside and Out is a great, great track. Um, 
Okay, that's, uh, I'm going to end it here and make call this part one. And then I'll uh, put up a part two video continuing on because this is getting a little bit long. Um, so yeah, I'll put the links down below for all the channels I mentioned earlier. Um, check them out. Give them a sub. Um, and uh, stay tuned for part two. All right. Thanks, everyone. It's Bill from the Vinylverse.